Ken Dryden was one of the best goaltenders to ever play the position. So good, in fact, that he retired in the middle of his prime to pursue a career in politics. But before his political campaigns, he was a goalie for the Montreal Canadiens, winning six Stanley Cups and five Vezina trophies, becoming a first ballot Hall of Famer despite only playing eight seasons. Real quick pause, but if you guys have been subscribed to the channel for a while, you know I used to do compilation videos. So if that's something you're still interested in, subscribe to my second channel, where I'll be posting similar content. Thanks and enjoy the video. Ken Dryden was born in Hamilton, Ontario in 1947, and he was drafted 14th overall by the Boston Bruins in the 1964 NHL Amateur Draft. And days later, Boston traded Dryden to the Montreal Canadiens. Dryden was told by his agent that he had been drafted by the Canadiens and didn't even find out until the mid-1970s that he had actually been drafted by the Bruins. But rather than play for the Canadiens in 1964 for his rookie year, Dryden pursued a bachelor's degree in history at Cornell University, where he played hockey until his graduation in 1969. He backstopped the Cornell Big Red to the 1967 NCAA Championship and three consecutive ECAC Tournament Championships. On top of the tournament wins, he also won 76 of his 81 varsity starts. After dominating college hockey, Dryden finally made his NHL debut on March 14, 1971 against the Pittsburgh Penguins in Pittsburgh. The Canadians won that game 5-1 and Dryden earned his first NHL win. Later in the season, he stole the starting position and helped the Canadians win the Stanley Cup. He also won the Conn Smythe Trophy as the most valuable player in the playoffs, making him the only NHL player to win this trophy before winning the Calder Trophy as Rookie of the Year. The following year, Dryden did end up winning that Calder Trophy as the Rookie of the Year, as he was not eligible for it the previous year because he didn't play enough regular season games. In his third season, he won the Stanley Cup and the Vesna Trophy as the league's best goaltender, but he decided to take a break from hockey because he was unhappy with the contract that the Canadians had offered him, which he considered to be less than his market value, considering he won the Stanley Cup and the Vesna. So, on September 14, 1973, instead of negotiating with the Habs, he announced that he was joining the Toronto law firm of Osler, Hoskin, and Harcourt as a legal clerk for $135 a week. He skipped training camp and held out that season. The Canadians still had a good year, going 45-24-9, but lost in the first round of the playoffs. That year, the Canadians allowed 56 more goals in the 1973-74 season than they had the year prior with Dryden. He returned to the NHL for the 1974-75 season without skipping a beat. He dominated the NHL for the next four years, winning four Stanley Cups and four Fesna trophies, before abruptly retiring at the end of the 78-79 season. Dryden's NHL career was relatively short compared to most other great hockey players, lasting just over seven full seasons. Because of this, he didn't really hold any top records in any statistical areas. His stats just stood out because he spent his entire career with a dominant team and retired early. In the regular season, he maintained a 74.3 winning percentage, a 2.24 goals against average, a 922 save percentage, 46 shutouts, and 258 wins with only 57 losses across almost 400 NHL games. This was more than enough to be inducted into the NHL Hall of Fame and have his jersey number 29 retired by the Canadians. But all of this success must have gotten pretty boring for Dryden because it wasn't the physical toll of the game that caused him to retire, it was his desire to excel in other fields. And he did exactly that. After he retired, he became an author, a commentator, a sports executive, a teacher, and a politician. To date, Dryden has written six books from talking about his hockey career to talking about Canada's educational system. His first book was written during his playing career and it was a diary about Team Canada in the Canada vs. Soviet Union series of 1972 called Face Off at the Summit. His most recent book was written in 2019 titled Scotty, A Hockey Life Like No Other, where he talked about his Canadian's coach, Scotty Bowman. His most popular work is titled The Game, where he talks about the pressures he dealt with while playing professional hockey. And in the midst of his writing career, Dryden also worked as a television hockey commentator at the 1980, 1984, and 1988 Winter Olympics. He served as a color commentator alongside play-by-play -play announcer Al Michaels for ABC's coverage of The Miracle on Ice. In 1997, Dryden was appointed as president of the Toronto Maple Leafs by minority owner Larry Tannebaum. Pat Quinn assumed the head coach role in 1998. Shortly after joining the Leafs, Quinn took the general manager position, 
and this move some speculated was intended to prevent Dryden from hiring his former Canadiens teammate, Bob Gainey. A significant management reshuffle occurred on August 29, 2003, with the appointment of John Ferguson Jr. as general manager. In this restructuring, Dryden's position was eliminated, causing him to take a lesser role of vice chairman and secured a place on the Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment's board of directors. He continued this role until 2004, when he resigned to pursue yet another different career, this time in politics. Dryden jumped into the political scene enthusiastically, joining the Liberal Party of Canada and throwing his hat into the ring for the House of Commons during the 2004 federal election. With a heartfelt campaign, Dryden won by an impressive margin of over 11,000 votes. Stepping into the winner's circle, he embraced the role of Minister of Social Development in the cabinet. In the face of challenging times for the Liberal Party during the 2006 federal election, Dryden's determination shone through as he secured re-election. Despite his unwavering dedication, Dryden faced a setback in 2011, experiencing defeat at the hands of Conservative candidate Mark Adler, with a difference of nearly 6,000 votes. In January 2012, Dryden became a special visitor at McGill University's Institute for the Study of Canada. He taught a Canadian studies course titled Thinking the Future to Make the Future, which focused on Canada's future issues and solutions. While Dryden's legendary Hall of Fame NHL career rightfully shines, it's just one chapter in the captivating story of his life. Beyond his playing career, he explored new careers, showcasing all of his extraordinary talents. This journey led him to flourish not only as a successful politician, but also as a renowned author. Looking back, it's almost as if the NHL was simply too easy for a man like Ken Dryden.